Another commentary done by Diggity upper left hand corner. We have I love XTO as the green or sorry bottom left hand corner We have him as the green Terran upper left hand corner as the uh, mustard yellow Protoss we have ATI and is this on metaverse again? Did they just play? Should have checked the map before starting. Yeah, so it's gonna be back-to-back -back matches on metaverse for For XTO let's see if that, that will give him I Really liked his play against 80s mullet Part of it is, is it, you know, hurts because it's like, ah, Edie's Mullet getting dropped and honestly kind of getting ripped apart by XTO's really, I mean, he had a really good opener, but then XTO just playing wily all over the map, all over the map. ATI showed some pretty strong play up to this stage, so he's going to have his work cut out for him. What I'm hoping to see... I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens on Metaverse. This is, again, one of those maps that... Uh, I don't know wh wh whether to say this is Terran or Protoss favored. I think most Terran feel that it is definitely more of a Protoss map for a variety of reasons. And having seen a lot of... I don't know. I don't have an opinion. Not sure why... Not sure why I should have an opinion. I'm a commentator, but in this instance... Just feels like one of those maps that, uh, yeah. Probe gonna scout upper right hand corner first. Looks like we're not yet. So, uh, doesn't have the minerals for gas as of yet. Just flooding some probes. Going ahead and grabbing gas. 142 mark, pretty standard. We'll see if there's a zealot before anything else to potentially box out an SCV scout. SCV is going to come across ATI's base last. Barracks being built along the corner of this command center. For the potential defensive ring and probe scout yeah should be able to get in this base and see things because of the timing of it before there is going to be an opportunity to go ahead and close that out cybernetic score warping in probes going ahead and meandering up to gas it looks like it is going to be three rather than two and no first sell it so gonna just produce that initial dragoon we have seen a skip of range oftentimes. I'm wondering if ATI is going to play that style. And SE blocking the ramp. But taking some free damage from that probe. Now it's going to be battle. Nope. Probe able to sneak past. Confirming the barracks. And also confirming critically lack of a vesting geyser. Which means it was going to be Rax into expand. And this does give opportunities for ATI to go ahead and interrupt or delay that additional command center. He's not going to be able to get units out to harass it. Let's see if he goes for a command center himself. It looks like he is going to produce an initial Dragoon rather than just going ahead and plopping his command center. And he's not wandering down with this probe. Okay, so now he's wandering down with that probe. A preemptive bunker being placed because of the lack of scouting information, which is wise. Is able to get a little bit of a delay, but not in a massive amount of delay. Single Marine now in the comforting, the comforting confines of his metal encasing where he can stare out at opponents. First Dragoon is here SV wandering in the base going to confirm that range isn't upgrading but also well let's see if he can deal with this dragoon but also there's no third pylon down yet that's usually something you're looking for so ATI did plant down Nexus that was confirmed by XTO as well so now he knows that it's just going to be kind of a economic foot race but I think XTO is going to have yeah he's going to be ahead in that not that ATI is going to be all that far behind let's see if ATI He's continued to skip range and continued to siphon up a lot of gas. And I'm wondering if he is going to follow this up with either an early robo or early DT or something along those lines. Third pylon kind of in position along that front. First factory going down. We do have three SCVs in gas currently. We'll see how quickly that second gas is grabbed. Engineering bay already up to potentially deal with that. Now range being upgraded but that was a lot of gas that was mined for a very long period of time for ATI that didn't really maybe there he was just wanting to leave his options open and play a little bit more flexible uh we'll see if he goes ahead and drops a robo behind this and just goes for kind of the standard one gate robotics play barracks out in front engineering bay floating across is he gonna land the engineering bay to get a, a little bit of extra padding or just use it, yeah. So blocking everything. Once Dragoon range is finished, which this is, keep in mind, decently delayed. Can harass a lot of this. I don't think that uh, if I if I 
Well, we'll see. I think without range, well, we'll see how quickly that siege tank gets out as well. It's probably going to be a null factor. Three factories behind this with one machine shop. We'll see if additional machine shops join this. But this could be a heavy tank push for XDO to follow. Or he could just want to filter in. No, this is going to be four factories. Still no... Yeah, four factories. Four factories, no armory. So potentially looking for a timing. ATI, drop that second assimilator. Still, wow, okay, so he wants to go to base carrier. Already has that Stargate up, so no wonder he's mining and saving all of that gas. So we got two gates down, Stargate in the background, double mining. So yeah, XDO does need to make a push at this. He's already sniffed this out. Maybe because of the lack of Dragoon pressure. Maybe because he saw that guy mining and he saw that the Cybernetics Core wasn't spinning for such a long period of time. And he's like, okay, there weren't DTs. There weren't, there's no Reavers that have come. So he's going to have five factories to push into this. And we saw this. So there's the Fleet Beacon. He's going to have a lot of troops. And potentially an overwhelming amount of troops to gun down on the front. This is what I wanted to say earlier, is, is I didn't know that there were going to be sufficient... The, yeah, the siege tanks on the front. ATI microing that nicely. was a little bit concerned, but actually the siege tanks a little bit exposed over that edge if ATI wanted to get aggressive about it. I mean, with a little bit of uh, dancing and trading, instead he just wants to get the free hits, it looks like. Siege tank is upgrading. And he's just going to keep these vultures up here to hide kind of that troop count. And basically now ATI... Yeah, already building carriers. Just wants to hold them. Use them for map. Get those carriers out. Use them for map control. Be able to... He's hoping, I think, to catch XTO by surprise. XTO doesn't necessarily have this confirmed, but it, it's possible he's like, you know, I'm just going to go five factories anyway and push into him before he gets that third up. But I think especially looking at the lack of Dragoons on the front, he, he sniffed out a tech switch. So two carriers on the way. As far as workers, ATI is in the lead, but that's not going to make a difference. This is going to come down to a crash in the mid game. Vulture speed and mines being upgraded. And XTO gathering up to start getting a move on. An additional marine being built. So he's probably going to br bring those marines alongside. And I like that with that Dragoon not being on the front. So unloading. Five factories making their way. This is before the. This is going to be a rough timing for ATI because he's only going to have a handful of dragoons and zealots. The carriers will be here. No armory behind this, but carriers take a while to kill things, and oftentimes the vultures and siege tanks can still annihilate everything underneath. Nice boxing out on the high ground. The vultures pressing forward. Now ATI realizes, okay, this is going to be five factories, and he's pushing into me. Zealot's able to get on top, but the Dragoon's just getting wiped out. Probably going to lose his natural. The, the first two carriers building interceptors. And despite the fact that none of these units can attack air, this is not... To, I don't think this is sufficient to defend. Probably going to lose this Nexus. Now realizes, okay, it's carrier, but it doesn't matter. Let's see, is there an armory anywhere? No, no armory being built still. But this might be a situation where you can just keep building troops and pushing them in. And two carriers just is not going to be sufficient. And it's a while before there's additional troops. Mines at the gateways as well. Yeah, and XTO just diving into the main, clearing out all of the probes on location. And I think that is going to be all she wrote. XTO looks like he's on the verge of a berth. To the round of 16. ATI tr still trying to defend this off with the carriers he has. But it's kind of an afterthought. Looks like, yeah, that armory's finally being built. More, mi more vultures, more mines being planted. But there's only 18 probes for ATI. The siege tank's just walking up as well. They might be able to wipe out this nexus. Well, it looks like there's sufficient carriers where they can take this out now. More vultures, yeah, kind of wandering out. All they have to do is plant mines. At this location, still getting more probes underneath this. 41 workers for XTO. A sizable bank still to work with. We might see two more carriers out of this. 
But this is going to be four carriers and two dragoons with 13 probes to try to win the game for ATI. Because this is an elimination match, it looks like he's still going to try to fight this out. Finally able to wipe out the troops in his base. He's got seven probes left to his name. More vultures wandering forward. Additional factories being dropped. And every single factory... Well, not every single factory. Oh, yeah, okay. Now every single factory building Goliaths. And you have that range being upgraded. More vultures sliding in underneath to force those carriers to stay at home base. So basically forcibly pinning them at location. And allowing that Goliath attack force to grow to counter the carriers. One probe left, and I have no idea where it's at for ATI. Where is it hiding? It says there's one probe, but I don't see it. There it is. So ATI's bank, it's not going to get much larger from here. So he's got to win it with the carriers and two Dragoons he's got. And unfortunately, he doesn't have observers to get the Dragoons down either. And Micro and Carriers versus Mines? A tall order. So four carriers stalwartly making their way, knowing that there's a Goliath attack force waiting for him. XTO going ahead and grabbing his third. Also scooting out Vultures to make sure an additional base hasn't been grabbed. A bunch of turrets to assist as well. These carriers are going to engage the Goliath attack force right as Goliath range comes online. And the Goliaths actually look like they're in sufficient numbers where they can wipe out the interceptors and potentially nullify the carrier fleet that way. And ATI, interceptors cost money. I don't know that he can rebuild them. Although he is rapidly back up to six probes, so it looks like he's yeah still trying to fight it and hold into this eBay's also spiting, spotting these carriers. I'm waiting for a couple Goliaths to kind of meander and walk around and kind of pin these carriers in. Because they're going to have to... Yeah, now they're starting to take flight. Still more Goliaths. Nothing but Goliaths being built. And the Vultures, once they've checked these locations, could probably just walk right back out and engage in another attack. Or these Goliaths, if they just want to go ahead and march forward and take out the two Dragoons that are sitting there, they can win the match themselves. Ten Goliaths now marching in. Able to find the carriers out of position. One Dragoon down. Second Dragoon now trying to protect the front. And now the carriers have to defend against an attack, an army that can shoot both up and down. Overpowered unit, the Goliath. So OP. There's GG from ATI. XTO advances to the round of 16. And it is set. And that is what I'm going to cast next time. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.